So when that all was put together, they put it on the back page of the, of the, of the Sunday comics. It was so different and it was such a, uh, it created a sensation during the depression. And during the depression, uh, as you know, the newspapers couldn't sell ads anywhere else. And all of a sudden, when people started to read uh, the tar uh, Tarzan, they were selling ads. And the editors saw that when the, uh, they could sell ads, so the first thing he said, well, we want more superheroes. Right after that, after he started the Tarzan craze, which is what it was, Buck Rogers came along. Uh, Flash Gordon came along. Dick Tracy, all of those things happened just because of Tarzan. He did Tarzan for seven years and then they weren't paying him enough money because everybody was making money except him. Hearst, the, uh, the publisher, he saw what Foster had done as far as the newspaper industry, so he offered Foster a job that no artist could ever refuse. He made him, he gave him 150 a week at that time, was big money, and he gave him all the royalties and the copyrights, which no artist ever got in those days. When he created Prince Valiant for Hearst, uh, that became a huge success, and when all of the history that went on takes place in Foster's using Prince Valiant as the background for the whole Arthurian legend. And he followed the history very carefully as much as he could, but then he embellished on it to fit into the story of Prince Vad. He loved that era. And he wanted to show people how, there's sections uh, in there about how the Vikings came over to the United States. There's all kinds of his wonderful historical things, all based on fact. This is supposed to have taken place somewhere around 800 AD or 1200 in that era. And he tries to bring all of that history out the, the Huns and the Crusades and Rome burning and all of that, all of that history is in there. That's what made it so fascinating. He spent a great deal of time and a great deal of effort. He went to the Field Museum to get all the authentic, everything was authentic because until it got to be such a huge educational thing that, believe it or not, the King of England at that time said that Hal Foster's Prince Valiant was the Great, the, the biggest contribution to English literature in the past 100 years. He claimed that he spent about 55, 56 hours a week doing those one page, that's all he did, full page. All the detail, and look at that particular one there with the, with the, uh, with the boats and all of that. Those, those things are, are massive pieces of art. That's why I say he was arguably one of the greatest artists uh, this country ever produced. All, any artist, the Cartoonist Society or whatever you go to, they all know who Hal Foster was. But the Chicago area particularly doesn't know anything about him. And the reason why is because the Herald American carried Prince Valiant and Tarzan too up until 1974. And they went out of business. And what actually, we didn't know this until we found, uh, it was talking to these people during a lecture. A lady stood up from a wheelchair, an elderly woman, and she says, I know why. The Tribune actually did, did produce Prince Valiant after the Herald American for four weeks. And then what they want, see he had a full page for everywhere in all the newspapers. And the Tribune wanted to cut him down to a three quarters or a half page. Hal Foster wouldn't hear of it. That's the reason why the Tribune dropped it. And he didn't care because he had thousands of papers at that time. And when that happened, the people in Chicago never saw Prince Valiant for all these years. They go to any town, I don't care where you go, Raleigh, North Carolina, Chattanooga, every art museum has a whole room displaying their local artist that nobody ever heard of, obviously, just for the town. And here in Chicago is a guy who lived for 21 years, created a trillion dollar industry, and nobody, nobody knows it. There'd be no Spider-Man today if it hadn't been for him. Iron Man, all of that stuff, it's hard to conceive, but when you track it all back, it started somewhere, and he's the guy who started. He probably, arguably, is one of, was one of America's greatest artists because he was highly trained. It just turned out that he did most of his work in the pen and ink era. That's why he never was really considered up in the ranks of all of these other top artists. This man was a genius, 
and it really hurt me this the Chicago area people simply never recognize what he did or nobody seems to know anything about him. That's the purpose of this exhibit. 